Hey, welcome to part four of this lecture series on the ethical implications of emerging virtual and augmented reality technologies. In this video, I'm going to be discussing some of the issues that emerge due to the military entertainment complex that surrounds emerging virtual reality and augmented reality technologies. There's a long history of connections between the US military and the development of mixed reality technology. Ivan Sutherland's work on the Ultimate Display, the earliest augmented reality device, was sponsored in the 1960s by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, the research and department wing of the US Department of Defense. This is part of a wider and historically long-standing relationship between state bodies like DARPA and technology companies. The most prominent example of this is the development of the internet, originally as a military technology. And this relationship is referred to by scholars as the military entertainment complex. Patrick Krogan, in his book on war games, provides an account of the close connections between video game technologies and developments in military technoscience and warfighting research and development. Part of his analysis pays attention to how virtual reality, specifically Ivan Sutherland's development of the first head-mounted display in the 1960s, was used by the Air Force. Jared Goggin and Cecilia de Anastasio and Dove Marotra suggest that the spatial software used by Google Maps, originally developed by Keyhole Incorporated, and what's in Pokemon Go, was actually initially backed by the CIA's venture capital firm, Inkitel. This is one of the reasons that Pokemon Go wasn't licensed to operate in China. While such mapping technologies was also used commercially for augmented reality gaming. It was also used as an early warfighting technology by the US in Iraq in the early 2000s. As such, commercial augmented reality technology is situated on a wider lineage of military research and development. According to Patrick Krogan, in his more philosophical look at the military entertainment complex, the outcome of, the outcome of this is that we're living in a permanent wartime. Elsewhere, others make connections between augmented reality technology, and other apparatuses of the state. Mark Andreevich writes in his article, Data Collection Without Limits, that as part of a wider account of automation, digital technology, and policing, camera-equipped augmented reality smart glasses for facial recognition or license plate recognition and so on, operate as a mechanism of state control and power. This is despite wide-ranging evidence that facial recognition has an enormous bias problem. This narrative fits within recent developments, such as Microsoft weaponizing that augmented reality device HoloLens for military use. They recently signed a $480 million contract with the US military to develop a HoloLens style integrated visual augmentation system for use in military combat and training. Further blurring military and consumer technology, a 2018 patent for Microsoft's augmented reality smart glasses an in progress vision of what became the HoloLens there's an, once again an emphasis on mixed realities military applications, showing the potential for the relay of information between military personnel. The utilization of augmented reality by state police has accelerated as one of the technological responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. Augmented reality has been deployed by the state in order to attempt to identify and limit the spread of potential vectors of contagion. This has taken place in China, Italy, and the United Arab Emirates through the use of technologies developed by Chinese firms like Rokid or Quanxi Technology. Examples of these technologies include the KCN901 Smart Helmet or Rokid's AR Smart Glasses. Both technologies purport to record and display information about individuals within the user's view, specifically for the case of COVID-19 body temperatures, and they represent part of a much larger COVID-provoked boom in an industry of consumer-grade thermal imaging. In Australia, police are reportedly using Clearview AI facial recognition system that allows them to identify members of the public from online photographs or just photographs taken at public. And the government has just announced that it will be spending $250 million to make facial recognition part of how we access government systems like Centrelink payments. Meanwhile, Peter Dutton, the Australian Minister for Home Affairs has said that protesters should lose their welfare entitlements from Centrelink if they attend a protest. I'm sure this isn't going to go wrong. The case of augmented reality and COVID-19 is particularly interesting 
in that it represents the potential for the largest scale mobilization of augmented reality by the state to date. Due to the ongoing nature of this pandemic, there's, there's not really very much critical work about augmented reality specifically as a surveillance apparatus for biosecurity. Critical accounts of COVID-19 surveillance tech more broadly can, however, be extrapolated from other work. Michael Richardson suggests in his work on the use of drones in COVID-19 monitoring, forms of sensor technology may very well be effective solutions to the problem of a global pandemic, identifying social vectors of transmission and mitigating their impact. But is the rollout of these invasive sensing technologies by law enforcement likely intensifies, we must remain lucid about the long-term impacts on our civil liberties should they become a normalized part of social life. Thanks for checking out this video in the series. Don't forget to take a look at the full ethical implications of emerging mixed reality technologies linked in the report below. This has further details of all of these aspects and references to many additional resources on this topic. Thanks very much. I'm Marcus Carter. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.